interior design and architecture have uh, a somewhat different method of conveying information. And what I've found is that there are some really interesting synergies between that um, method that is historical and has been going on for years and years and the way that Universal Design for Learning approaches things. Uh, so Universal Design for Learning, one, one of the, the things that I think is the most uh, the most consistent between a studio environment of learning and universal design for learning in those principles is that the studio environment is all about iteration. It's all about starting from a concept and coming up with an, with an option and then critiquing that option and coming up with another option or four or five or six other options in order to get as much of those, those not only creative energies, but also those, those problem-solving ideas out of your head as possible and, and get them down on paper. And, 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 and so one of the things that we train our students very early on is to be less sensitive to the, um, the critique of their work as it's not a critique of them personally, it's a critique of the work that they're putting out and in, in, in an effort to help hone the work, to refine it, to get it to a point that's, that, that's better. That is directly applicable to the process of writing a paper, for example. The first option that you put out there is very rarely going to be your best work. Um, okay, it's never going to be your best work. So it always needs that, um, that second and third and fourth iteration. Uh, sometimes the structure of it needs to be completely reversed or, you know, uh, I think we've all had those experiences where you're, you're in the middle of writing a paper and you say, well, it would be so much clearer and easier if I started with that last topic first and then worked through in the other direction. Um, that process of iteration, uh, students need to know that's okay. And they need to know, they need to be encouraged in that process and not feel like, well, because I didn't get it the first time, I, I, I'm just no good at it and I can't do it. We have those students that feel as though they don't have the ability to do interior design or architecture work because of the fact that they didn't get it right the first time. And uh, I think if anybody got it right the first time, it would be a miracle. It is, it is part of the process. And so what, one of the things that we, are, we find it very important to teach is process. The process of throwing out the first idea or getting as many ideas out on paper as possible and then weeding through and finding what's good about each one and what's really not working for each one and then, uh, and then refining and refining and refining until you end up with a product that you can really champion and really get behind and say, okay, well, this is, you know, this is good. Um, another piece that I think is important with uh, relationship to universal design for learning is the feedback component of that. So it's important for instructors or, or even, even uh, guests that would come in and, and take a look over the student's work to provide feedback in a way that is um, critical, for sure, to be sure, but also helpful and substantive and gives the students a, a new direction or a new thought process, a new perspective. I never thought of looking at that, looking at, at the process that way. Um, we train our students to make sure that they have uh, the widest possible view, okay, if someone were approaching this building um, in, you know, with, with, with a couple small children in tow, how would that change their experience? Um, if someone were approaching this building and they're late for a meeting and they need to be able to get to their destination quickly, how does that, how does that affect their experience in the space? So um, each, each one of those is, it's important to, to recognize the perspective of the end user and for the instructor, it's important to recognize the perspective of the student to help them to recognize the perspective of the end user um, as, as they're, they're making, uh, approaching and making use of those, the, that space and, and that process.